7 Tests God's Chosen Must Go Through Test Number 1. The Test of Waiting When it comes to God's plans for your life, you need to learn to wait patiently. Sometimes God might make you wait in order to clear the path for you. He also wants to make sure that you are the type of person who is a good listener and can wait for further instructions. You see, when you are always in a hurry, you give God the impression that you are the type of person who will always try to do things your own way. This is known as rebellion. And you know the Bible tells us God will not strive with man. He is too big to find himself in a power drag between you and him. When he gives you an instruction, you need to wait for the next step. This is known as patience. We are not the ones leading God. He is the one leading us. In 1 Samuel chapter 13, we read about King Saul, who was facing a critical situation. He was about to go to war against the Philistines, and his army was outnumbered. Samuel the prophet had instructed Saul to wait for him to come and offer sacrifices before going into battle. But Saul became impatient. He decided to take matters into his own hands and offer the sacrifices himself. This was a clear disobedience to God's instructions. Saul's disobedience cost him dearly. He lost his kingdom, and his legacy was marred by his impatience. If only he had waited patiently on the Lord's timing, things would have turned out differently. Test number two. The test of isolation. Isolation in the context of spirituality means God separating you from the crowd to spend time with Him. It's a time when God will strip away the distractions of the world and the opinions of others. But why does God separate you from the crowd to spend time with Him alone? Well, first of all, it's a time of preparation. Just like an athlete who isolates themselves to train, so too must we isolate ourselves to prepare for the tasks God has for us. It's also a time of refinement. God will use this time to purify and transform your heart, making you more like Him. We can see examples of this test throughout the Bible. Jesus, for instance, spent 40 days and nights in the wilderness alone before beginning His ministry. Another example is Moses, who spent 40 years in the wilderness before God called him to lead his people out of Egypt. During this time, God will transform your way of thinking. He will remove worldly knowledge and replace it with divine knowledge from above. He will teach you the things of the Spirit, which can only be learned in a place of solitude. So if God starts isolating you, don't worry. This is just part of the process. Test number three, the test of opposition. You see, when everything is going on smoothly, you might think you are very good, which can lead to overconfidence. God allows people to oppose you so that He can see how you respond to adversity. It's during these moments of opposition that your true character is revealed. If you are the type of person who quits easily, God will never take you very far because you will always want to give up halfway. When you are alone, you might think you are naturally calm and humble. But when you face opposition, this will really show your true character. During your years of ministering, people will disagree with you. In fact, some might even be Christians. Your family might even threaten to disown you because of your beliefs. It's in moments like these that your real nature comes into play. You can't call yourself a gentle Christian until people provoke you. You can't call yourself kind until people are rude to you. God needs to know how you will respond under pressure. If you look at the Bible, you'll see that every person God used mightily faced fierce opposition. Moses, for example, was always put under pressure. He had to deal with the stubbornness of the Israelites, the threats of Pharaoh, and the challenges of leading a nation through the wilderness. Remember, this test of opposition is just a test. And if you pass it, God will use you mightily for His kingdom. But if you fail, you will keep repeating this test till you get it right. Test number four, the test of impossible situations. You see, God will often put you in situations that seem impossible to handle. Whether it's a financial crisis, a health issue, or a broken relationship, you will face obstacles that seem insurmountable. And in these moments, you might feel like giving up. But it is in these impossible situations that God is teaching us a valuable lesson. He is teaching us to depend on Him. He wants us to trust Him completely, even when everything seems to be falling apart. Think about it. If we only turn to God when things are going well, then our faith is not being tested. We are not growing spiritually. But when we are faced with impossible situations, we have a choice. We can either try to solve the problem on our own, or we can turn to God and ask Him for help. And when we choose to turn to God, we will see miracles happen. We will see God work in ways that we never thought possible. 
We will see him provide for us, heal us, and restore what was broken. Take the story of Abraham, for example. God promised him that he would become the father of many nations, but he and his wife Sarah were old and had no children. It seemed impossible for them to have a child at their age, but God worked a miracle and Sarah became pregnant. Test number five, the test of integrity. This is probably one of the most difficult tests any believer will face. Integrity is the ability to remain honest even in the absence of others. This is when your true nature as a Christian is revealed. You see, when we are in the presence of other believers, we might continue to do the right thing. But when others are not around us, God will allow you to face situations that will prove your real nature. He might allow you to come in contact with someone else's money to see if you will be honest and return it to them. Just like Joseph, God might watch you to see if you will flee in the face of immorality. Remember when Jesus was called by God, he was immediately sent into the wilderness to be tested. This is what truly made Jesus stand out. Job, on the other hand, refused to give up his belief in God, even though he saw many reasons to. As a Christian, can you continue to stand up for your faith, or will you try to please everybody and go with the crowd? Test number six, the test of criticism. Before God can use us for his purposes, he will test us in many ways, and criticism is one of the most difficult to endure. It can come from anyone, including our fellow church members, and it can be incredibly discouraging. But we must remember that Satan uses criticism to try and derail us from our path and make us doubt our calling. In Matthew 13, Jesus tells the parable of the sower, where some seeds fall on rocky ground and wither because of persecution. This is a powerful reminder that we must persevere through our struggles and trust in God's plan for our lives. When we face criticism, we must remember that it is just another test, and we can use it to strengthen our faith and resolve. You must remember that we are not alone. Jesus faced criticism throughout his ministry, and he understands our struggle. Secondly, we must examine the criticism we receive and discern whether it is valid. If it is, we can use it to improve our work and become better servants of God. If it is not, we can let it go and not let it affect us. Test 7 the test of success. It's easy to think that we are humble and gentle when we are not experiencing success. But it's a whole other story when we become famous or achieve a level of success that we never thought possible. That's when our true character is revealed. That's when God sees if we have the tendency to become proud and forget about Him. If God sees that we are not humble enough to stay grounded and to remain obedient to Him, then He will not promote us very quickly. He knows that if we become too prideful, then we will lose sight of what is truly important in life. We will forget that our success is not solely based on our own abilities, but on the grace and blessings that God has bestowed upon us. We also need to remember that success is not an end in itself. It's a means to an end, a way for us to use our talents and resources to serve God and others. When we achieve success, we should use it to further God's kingdom and help those in need. So, there you have it. Thank you for watching. If you love our videos, please feel free to subscribe to our channel.